Psalm 23. The Bible says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord, that one day you saw our need, left glory, came this world, lived a perfect sinless life, went to Calvary as God's perfect lamb, shed your blood to become the propitiation for our sin. Lord, you was buried and you rose again according to the scriptures, and that is the gospel, the good news, uh, that if people put their faith and trust in the finished works of Calvary, uh, then the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be saved from their sin. Uh, God, what a blessing to be saved today. Uh, Lord, I don't deserve to be saved. Uh, Lord, I ought to be in hell today. Uh, but I'm thankful for that day you came to where I was, uh, showed me my need in that day, Lord. When I called on you, you saved me. Uh, you said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. And you saved me that day uh, and washed me and cleansed me, uh, made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, and Lord, I bless your holy name. Uh, but Father, I'm glad you didn't leave me there. Uh, Lord, I'm glad, hallelujah, Father, that that was just the beginning. Uh, Lord, you became my shepherd. Uh, Lord, you've led me to green pastures. Uh, God, you've restored my soul. Uh, God, you've just been good to me all these years, and I bless you for it. Uh, now, Father, thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God today. Thank you for your goodness. Uh, Lord, what a privilege to have a copy of your word. Uh, what a privilege to hear songs of praise unto thee. Uh, what a privilege to be assembled with the saints of God uh, and to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes. Uh, you'd put a hedge about us. You'd bind the powers of hell. Uh, and, God, you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, thank you for everyone in attendance. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, folks that have been uh, sick and they're back with us. Thank you for folks that have been traveling. They've been back down and they're back with us. Uh, Thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, the many visitors. We appreciate that. Uh, but, Lord, we appreciate most of all your presence in the service. Uh, and I pray for the next few minutes uh, you'd continue to stir in our midst. Uh, you'd continue to speak to hearts. Uh, and you'd meet every need of every heart. Uh, Lord, there's some here today. Uh, Lord, they're facing grave things. Uh, they're facing obstacles. They're facing problems. Uh, and, Lord, they need some help. Uh, and I pray they'd look unto the Lord from whence cometh our help. Uh, and, Lord, you'd help them today. Uh, Father, there are some uh, who need your touch. Uh, there are some uh, who need answers. Uh, there are some uh, who just, Lord, uh, uh, need to see you high lifted up again. Uh, and, Lord, there may be some uh, who've never met you, who've never seen you. And, God, I pray especially for them today. Uh, they'd realize their lost condition and they'd come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, help us now. Be with those that are sick and afflicted, those that are traveling, those that, Lord, desire to be here and can't be here. God bless them and be with them. Uh, but now help us from the Word of God uh, and will not fail to bow these unworthy heads again and bless you and praise you for what you've done. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to dissect this verse before we get to the thought. I want you to notice this verse starts out with the providential one. It says, the Lord. It doesn't say a Lord. It doesn't say somebody who aspires to be a Lord. It says, the Lord. He is the providential one. Can I say, Lord means uh, He's Almighty. Lord means uh, He is Jehovah God. Uh, Lord means he is the one that he told Moses, I am that I am. Uh, he is the one that he told Isaiah that he's the Lord and there is none beside him. Uh, can I say that he is supreme? Uh, there is nobody that can even aspire to his greatness uh, or his majesty. Uh, he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning uh, 
and the end. Hey, he is Lord today. He is God today. He is the one we need to look to. He's the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's none other way unto the Father but by me. What a blessing to know he's Lord today. And we're in the right place because we're going to point to him. Huh? We find the providential one, the Lord. Now notice, if you will, the present tense. David said is. David didn't say the Lord was my shepherd. David didn't say the Lord will be my shepherd. David said the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, present tense. Uh, can I say this year, hallelujah, uh, I, I, I celebrated 50 years of being saved. Uh, 50 years of knowing the Lord Jesus as my Lord. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, he wasn't just my Savior then. Uh, he's not going to be just my Savior tomorrow. Uh, he is my Savior. Uh, he is my Lord. Uh, he is my shepherd. Uh, hey, he's never left me nor forsake me. Uh, he's been a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, there's never been a time uh, when he hasn't been uh, right here with me. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, what a blessing. Uh, he's a saving Lord, uh, but he's also a shepherding Lord, uh, and he stays with his people. What a blessing. I've never had to go hunt for him. There's been times he's had to leave the fold to come hunt for me, but I've never had to hunt for him. Uh, we see the providential one. We see he's in the present tense. That's why he told Moses, I am that I am. He's always in the present tense. He's always present. Huh? Can I say, uh, uh, he's omnipotent, which means all-powerful. Uh, he's omniscient, when, which means he's all-knowing. Uh, but he's omnipresent. Uh, he's always present. What a blessing. We well, see the present tense. But then notice the personal regard. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Right. Oh, yeah. Now, can I say today, the Lord is the shepherd, yeah. but I could also say he's my shepherd. Yeah. Right. Amen. Uh, I met him yes, in March of 1974. Right. I became his, uh, yes. and he became mine. Uh, uh, listen, it's not enough to know that he's Lord. It's not enough to know that he was born in a manger uh, and born of a virgin uh, and we celebrate him at Christmas. Uh, it's not enough to know that he died uh, and was buried and rose again and we celebrate him as Easter. Uh, you can believe that he's Lord. Uh, you can believe that he was a great man. Uh, you can believe that he was a prophet. Uh, you can believe that the Bible's true. Uh, but unless you believe on the Lord uh, and you accept him as your personal Savior uh, until he becomes yours friend uh, nothing else matters uh, he's my shepherd we see the personal regard the Lord is my shepherd the providential one the present tense the personal regard but then he uses the term shepherd shepherd's another term for the term pastor he says the Lord is my shepherd He's my pastor. John 10, 11 tells us something about the shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Can I say he laid down his life for you and I? Yeah. Uh, what a pastor, what a shepherd. Uh, he gave himself for us. Uh, uh, John 10, 14, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep uh, and am no uh, can I say today, uh, he knows us. Uh, he knows our name. Uh, he knows the number of the hairs on our head. Uh, he knows our nature. Uh, he knows our downsitting and our uprising. Uh, he knows our yesterdays, our todays, and tomorrows. Uh, he knows everything about us. Uh, uh, Colonel, long before you had knee problems, he knew you'd have knee problems. Uh, he knows it all. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, he knows me. Uh, but what a blessing. Uh, I know he 
him and I am known of him and he is known of me. How do you know him? I know him through the word of God. Hey, the word of God shared him with me and the word of God lets me know his mind on things. Lets me know his promises on things. Lets me know his will on things. Hey, through the word of God I got to know him but through the spirit of God that indwells me I get to walk with him I get to talk with him I get to experience him I get to know him what a blessing he went on to say this uh, uh, through the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 13 and 20 uh, now the God of peace uh, that brought again from the, de from the dead our Lord Jesus uh, that great shepherd of the sheep uh, uh, through the blood of the everlasting covenant uh, make you perfect in every good work to do his will uh, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight uh, through Jesus Christ to uh, be glory forever and ever amen uh, uh, the writer of Hebrews who says he's the great shepherd. Uh, hey, he's the good shepherd. Uh, he's the great shepherd. Uh, he's the one that made an everlasting covenant between God and man uh, that if we'd believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, our sins would be cleansed uh, and we could become adopted into the family of God. Uh, he's a good shepherd. He's a great shepherd. Uh, he's our pastor. He leads us. Uh, in 1 Peter 2.25 we find, For ye were as sheep going astray. I don't know about you, but that's what I was. I wasn't going in the direction of God. I wasn't looking for God. I was raised in church, uh, but I had no church in me. Uh, uh, listen, uh, there's a lot of people raised in church, uh, but not many raised in Christ. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, I wasn't looking for God. Uh, I was away from God. I was a stranger to the things of God. Uh, and so were you if you were lost. Uh, and so are you if you are lost. Uh, hey, uh, for ye were as sheep going astray. But, I love that conjunction. Uh, things are about ready to change uh, but now uh, are returned unto the shepherd uh, and bishop uh, of your souls uh, he's our shepherd uh, and the bishop or the pastor of our souls uh, Peter said in 1 Peter 5 4 uh, and when the chief shepherd shall appear uh, ye shall receive a crown of glory uh, that fadeth not away uh, Jesus said I'm the good shepherd uh, the writer of Hebrews uh, said he's the great shepherd uh, and Peter says he's the chief shepherd uh, and when he comes uh, all of his sheep uh, are going to receive a crown of glory because uh, they let the shepherd uh, be the shepherd of their lives uh, now because this providential one is presently and personally my pastor, my shepherd. Because of that, I have peace. Look what the Bible says. The Lord is my shepherd, semicolon. That means you need to stop and think about what was just said, and that's why we spent all that time on that. But after that semicolon, there's another thought or Therefore, because the Lord is my shepherd. Look what it says. I shall not want. Because he's my shepherd, I have peace. And I shall not want. Can I say this? In order to have peace... I'm not talking about peace that the world talks about where they sign a contract and then break it in a week. I'm talking about the peace of God. And I'm talking about peace with God. And I'm talking about peace in God. And I'm talking about peace in my circumstances. And peace in my pressures and my problems. Uh, and peace, uh, no matter what's going on in this world, uh, I can come to the house of God uh, and throw heads toward heaven and say, God's been good to me. Uh, in order to have peace, first of all, you've got to be in fellowship with the shepherd. You've got to know him to know his peace. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. You've got to be in fellowship with the shepherd. 
that's not all. You have to be following the shepherd. Amen. You can know the shepherd, not follow him. When you're not following him, you're not going to have the peace of God. Amen. Matter of fact, the reason some of you are so troubled all the time, you're not following the shepherd. I don't have to be first in line behind the shepherd. I just got to be behind the shepherd. As long as I can sit, set my eyes on him, Brother Ron, everything's okay. I get in trouble when I can't see him. When I've drifted, when I'm not behind him, that's when I get troubled, don't have peace. In order to have peace, you got to be in fellowship with the shepherd. You got to be following the shepherd, but you also got to have faith in the shepherd. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I don't always know, Brother Ray, where he's going to take me. But I don't have to know. Because I'm just following him. And I know he does all things well. And I know as long as I'm following him, no matter what comes my way, it had to come through him and it'll be all right. I just have faith uh, that he knows what he's doing. Uh, Paul said, I'm persuaded uh, that he's going to be able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, even when you can't see him, you still got to trust him. Uh, he knows what he's doing, friend. Uh, I've got peace today. And when you got peace, you shall not want. I want to preach on this thought this morning. I want to preach on, are you in want? David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Can I say that phrase, I shall not want, is a personal choice of David's? Amen. He said, I shall not want. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I choose to be content where I'm at. If there's any cancer affecting churches across this country, as folks are not content. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Can I say... Another cancer in our churches is folks are wanting, but they're not wanting what the Lord's wanting. Well, well, Ask you again: Are you in want? Can I say first of all, are you in want of hope? Are you desiring some assurance today? That's what hope is, assurance. Amen. She sang that song about the blood, not having to worry about going to hell. We're headed to heaven. And through the blood, we gain assurance. Right. Through the Word of God, we have assurance. John wrote, These things have I written that ye may know. I have assurance because I believe what God said. Uh, I have hope because I've read the back of the book. Are you in want of hope? Do you need some assurance today? Are you here today and you say, Preacher, I, I think I'm saved or I'd like to be saved or I want to know about being saved. Well, that means you're in want and you're in the right place because you can gain some assurance today by putting your faith in the Lord and what He says. Are you in want of hope? Do you need some assurance? Are you in want of hope? Do you need some ambition? If there's anything that has harmed America as much as anything else, it's laziness or apathy. Oh, amen. Yeah, amen. Brother Doug, growing up on that farm, you couldn't be lazy. Hmm? 
must have stuck because you're not lazy now. We got young people today, they aspire to become couch potatoes. The dirtiest four-letter word in America is work. Yet the Bible says if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Let me help you something. Everybody would like to sit at the house and have everything that they ever desire. Uh, that's human nature. But you've got to work if you're going to eat. You've got to work if you're going to enjoy some of life's pleasures. You've got to work. You've got to work a lot if you're going to fill your tank up with gas. We come back from, from Tennessee on Friday, Corbin. We hit Corbin, it's two eighty nine a gallon. Get home, it's three forty six. I mean, what is the deal? Mm, they drive the same cars in Corbin that we do here in Florence. Bunch of thieves. <laughs> gotta work. Can I say you gotta work? You're going to have a roof over your head, shoes on your feet, shoes on your youngins' feet. Hey, if you send your kids to school, that's going to cost you a fortune. I'm talking about regular school. I'm not even talking about college. Everything costs. Yes, want to take a vacation, that costs. Everything costs. And by the way, under mashed potato brains, everything's up 25%. What a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? We was at Sam's yesterday, and, I, and Sam's has the best lens wipes for your glasses. I cannot stand when my glasses are dirty. I mean, I can't stand it, and I just spit on them a second ago. Drove, it's driving me crazy. Can't stand it. Well, I ordered some off of Amazon. Junk. You have to use three to get your glasses good because they don't have anything on them. But Sam's got the best ones. And we was at Sam's. I said, I've got to get me some glasses wipes over here, huh? Last time I bought them, there was eight dollars. Well, they had a dollar off yesterday, and they were ten eighty-eight. <laughs> same thing, same thing I bought last time, but you know I got to pay for Joe Biden, you know, to go to Delaware twenty times a week. Uh, uh, they tell us we got to go green, but they fly them jets around like nothing, and we're paying for it. You're welcome. Uh, you got to work. But can I say, when it comes to church work, people have gotten lazy. Where's our ambition for Jesus? Huh? Where's your vision? Where there is no vision, the people perish. Huh? Where's your drive? The Bible says not to be weary in well doing. I know we don't have enough hours in the day. I know we live in a society that never sleeps. I know you got 700 channels it takes you an hour to click through to find out what you want to watch. I know all that stuff. How come we don't have a desire to do anything for Jesus? Because we don't have any hope. We had hope that if we do something for Jesus, somebody's life's going to be changed. We'll do it. But we've lost our hope. We've lost our ambition. We've lost our commitment. Are you in want? Are you in want of hope? How about our awareness? The word awareness means to have some discernment, to know the will of God. Look, Fred, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look around this world and see this world's going crazy and, and things are being set up for the Antichrist. Yep. Uh, yep. You can believe what you want to. They try to take Trump out because Trump's standing in the way. Yes. Yes. Right. You can believe what you want to. Right. huh? Did you hear what he said in, in Michigan yesterday? He's going to do away with cryptocurrency. What is the world trending to? Cryptocurrency. You think the world's going to let him do that? Oh, next bullet won't miss. Hmm? By the way, it wasn't a piece of glass that pierced his ear. Right. Bunch of morons. Uh, I'm just trying to help you. This world is setting everything in order for the Antichrist. Right. And I got news for you. The church is out of here before the Antichrist is revealed. Uh, 
Do you have any hope? Where, where's your awareness? Uh, we're like a bunch of ostriches with our heads buried in the sand thinking, oh, it'll be get better. What? I know, I know. All you desire is a cabin in the corner of glory land. I got news for you. I've read the book. There aren't any cabins over there. Uh, uh, but can I help you with something? Uh, 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 going to heaven is more than just getting out of our problems. Uh, uh, going to heaven is to go to worship the Lamb. And when we go, we should not go empty-handed. Uh, we ought to take as many people as we can with us. Are you in want of hope? Are you in want of the hypostatics? That's a big word I had to look up to get an H word so I can alliterate everything so Brother Adrian didn't teach against me. What that simply means is the staples or the essentials or the fundamentals of your life. Are you in want today? Listen, I know you've got to eat. I know you've got to get from place to place. I know that... You know, you got to keep your house repaired, and you got to. I know those staples are important. Are you in want of those things? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, is the Bible true? Yes, sir. Huh? Is it impossible for God to lie or not? Yep. Yeah, God can't lie. And God said in his word through the apostle Paul, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Now are you want of any staples, any needs? Because the Bible said God's going to supply them. Now are you in want? Well see, in order for that verse to be true, You've got to understand the precursor, the condition of the verse. See, back up a few verses before that, verse 15, Paul writing to the church of Philippi said this, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire to give, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. The apostle Paul had instructed them and taught them on giving and receiving. And when we're faithful to what God says about giving and receiving, he shall supply all our needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, you see, there's a, a condition. Uh, always in the Bible, there are if and then statements. Uh, if we'll do this, then God will do that. Uh, our problem is we want God to do his part without us doing our part. Uh, uh, it'll be a great day in your life uh, if you learn and understand and begin to participate uh, in the joy of giving. Uh, God loveth a cheerful giver. Say, preacher, I don't have much to give. Give yourself, if nothing else. Uh, but there is the joy in giving. Uh, my mind's going back right now to a couple years ago. Big Doug standing up there, stood up uh, and testified. He said, I wish folks uh, could learn the joy of giving. You remember that preacher? Uh, I remember you telling that. Uh, and broken hearted, talked about the goodness of God. Uh, uh, listen to what the Bible says uh, about giving uh, and about receiving. Uh, in Luke 6, 38, uh, the Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give in your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Can I say that's just like God? He just don't give it back to you. He gives you more than you ever bargained for. He gives you more than you give. Pressed down, shaken, bubbling over. That's the way God does. It. Uh, in Malachi 3.10 he said bring ye all the tithes uh, into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house uh, and prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts uh, if I will not open uh, you the windows of heaven uh, and pour you out a blessing uh, that there shall not be room to receive it uh, are you in want today you in want of the staples for your life learn to give Learn to give properly. 
Huh? Brother Tony, can I embarrass you for a minute? How long has it been since you worked? Uh, 13, 13, years. 13 years he's been disabled. Now, I don't go into the treasurer's office and I don't check on everybody how much you give and all that stuff. I don't do any. That's when you can go. But I know he's faithful to give. And 13 years he hasn't worked. Are you living in a bigger and better house than you did back then? Yes, I am. Are you driving better vehicles than you did back then? Yep. Have you put on about 30, 40 pounds since then? Yeah, huh? Yeah. Has God not blessed you with a daughter? Yes. Has God not blessed your life? Uh, yes. Can you say that God honors giving? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, he does. Hmm. He said, Preacher, that wasn't real nice picking on him like that. I just used an illustration. Here's a man that hadn't worked, been disabled, but he gives and he gives and he gives. I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes he drives Thad nuts. Because he'll give all kinds of stuff. He'll give, you know, if it's only a few pennies, he's giving. Uh, his tithe envelope takes up three lines on each side for all the stuff he gives. <coughs> and God's been good to him. Amen. Mm. Are you in want today of the hypostatics? Uh, learn the biblical principle of giving it's not a matter of how much you give it's the intent in which you give it right. that widow just gave two mites yep. Yep. that's all she had but God said she gave more than anybody was there because right. she gave her heart when she gave it uh, well that went over well you never preach on money and that goes good are you in want today? I'm trying to help you. Are you in want of harmony? Do you need harmony in your mind? Is your mind all in turmoil today? Hmm. Hmm. David says, The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. Perfect peace have they whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. Uh, how about your life? Do you need harmony in your life? Is the job you work become a burden to you? The address you live at become a burden to you? Is going to Kroger's become a burden to you? You need a little harmony. Right? David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. See, as long as you're looking at your address, as long as you're looking at Kroger's, as long as you're looking at the people you work with, you'll never be in harmony. That's why the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You keep your eyes on the shepherd, those things won't bother you like they do. Huh? Can I say, I hate the price of gasoline, I hate the price of eggs, I hate the price of everything right now because I know we're overpaying. But I'm thankful that every time I go, Brother Donald, I got the money to buy it. You do you think supplied that, right. my shepherd? Right. Amen. That's good. Yep. You need harmony in your home? Can I say the home is not to be a war zone? The home's to be a haven. Uh, it's to be a refuge from this world. And in, by the way, you just have a house and cohabitation if the Lord's not the Lord of your home. You let the shepherd be the Lord of your home. Everything falls right into order and you'll have harmony. Huh? Listen, I love coming home. Nothing like home. All my travels, I can't wait till I get home. See Miss Annette. Be around my family. I can't wait to get home to our church. I miss our church. I appreciate and I'm thankful that the Lord's enlarged my coast and people want to hear me preach, but Dorothy said it best, there's no place like home. Uh, uh, I'm just asking, are you in want of harmony? Are you in want of heart? I'm talking about having an engagement to the shepherd. I'm talking about having conviction to follow the shepherd. 
I'm talking about a heart that is not easily moved, that's bonded to the shepherd. Do you have that heart today? See, Paul warned in the last days that people would be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You know why? Their heart's not settled on the shepherd. Are you in want of heart? Let me say this lastly. Are you in want of him? Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Are you in want of him? Listen, when we truly have the right relationship with the shepherd, all desires are met because there's nothing else known to man that can compare to having a relationship with the shepherd. Everything else just melts away when you're with him. The reason that we get all tore up about everything in this world is our relationship with him in what it should be. Huh? I'll just walk with him and let the world go by. Hmm? Huh? Are you in want of him today? I'm reminded what the Shunammite maid said about Solomon in Song of Solomon chapter 2. She said he's the lily of my valleys. Plural. You're going to go through some valleys. She said he's the lily of my valleys. But she went on to say this verse 3. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. She went on to say he's the choicest of 10,000 of my soul. She went on to say he is altogether lovely. She's talking about the shepherd. Can I say, David said, he's my shepherd. I shall not want. Are you in want today? What do you want today? Hmm? Do you know him? If you don't know him in a moment, we're going to give you an opportunity to come and know him. We're going to have what we call an invitation. We'll invite you to come. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved very simple to be saved you just need to realize you need to be saved if you're willing to come we'll introduce you to the shepherd maybe you're here today and you're saved but you've not been following we invite you to get back on track today maybe today you've, you're saved but you just your faith dwindled so then faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God start believing what God said come today and ask the, ask the Lord to restore your faith maybe you've lost your joy Come and ask him to restore your joy. Maybe there's some other need you just need to come talk to the shepherd about. Maybe the Lord's put somebody on your heart that you can be a blessing to, share the gospel to, or just be good to. Maybe you need to come and ask the Lord to open the door. Maybe today he's, he's, he's spoke to you about something else. Just do business with the shepherd. He's the shepherd. Just follow him and everything will be all right. Let's all stand this morning. Brother Clint, come get a song. While they come to get a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for being our shepherd. God, forgive me of my short-sightedness so many times. Help me to always seek to follow the shepherd. Lord, thank you for going well beyond meeting our needs when we follow the shepherd. Thank you for being a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Thank you for being my shepherd. A father in a crowd this size, I don't know anybody's heart, but you know everybody's heart. And maybe somebody doesn't know the shepherd. I pray the sweet Holy Spirit of God, through cords of blood, would speak to their heart, and they'd come, put their faith in the shepherd. They'd believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Lord, there may be some here today saved, but Lord, they just got sidetracked. Lord, help them to focus, get their focus back on the shepherd. 
Whatever the need is, Lord, speak to hearts. Help folks to mind the Lord. And Lord, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.